These are the top 15 questions to ask a realtor when selling a home. Hi, my name is Milton Andrade and I'm the broker of Franklin Realty Consultants and the team lead at Milton and Associates. And today I'm going to talk to you about the top 15 real estate questions to ask when you're selling a house. First, how do I prepare a home before I sell it? Let me put it this way. If you were going to sell a car, you would first detail it. You'd have any outstanding issues taken care of so you could maximize your sale prices, right? You would. A home is the same thing. First thing you need to do is make it presentable. This means giving the entire house a thorough cleaning and making minor repairs. Now, mop the floors, scrub the bathrooms, get rid of all the grime in the kitchen. Little things like patching holes in the wall, changing burned out light bulbs, and repairing broken appliances can make your place stand out in a crowded market. And don't forget to paint. Returning the walls to a neutral color can help your house sell quicker. Whites, creams, and grays can make the rooms seem bigger and help potential buyers see themselves living in there. If you're not moving out before you list your house, you'll also need to depersonalize and declutter. Put away your family photos, your knickknacks, and any other personal items you may have. Maybe you need to rent a storage unit if you don't have a place to put them all, but trust me, it's worth it. You want a potential buyer to mentally move into your home when they see it. Give them the space to do this. Number two, how long will it take to sell my home? In a normal market, a house can take anywhere between 55 to 75 days to sell. That includes 25 days to market and 30 to 45 days for closing. In today's market, a well-priced home in good current key condition will sell in 30 days or less, because currently Miami is in a seller's market. Now, the exact time it takes to sell a home depends on a few things, including time of year that you're listing. Homes tend to sell faster in the spring and early fall. Conditions in your local housing market can also play a factor. Homes sell faster in a seller's market when there's low inventory and high demand. Now, the condition of your home is also really important. Homes in great condition, turnkey condition, may sell faster than homes that need more work. Now, also you want to take into consideration if the buyer is financing and the type of financing. If a buyer needs to take out a mortgage, this may slow down the process. Financing deals usually take an average of 42 days to close, whereas cash deals can only take about two weeks. Working with the right banker is going to determine this. Now, the longer your home is on the market, the more money you're going to lose. You're still paying for your mortgage, your taxes, and utilities until the buyer officially closes, whether the home is vacant or occupied. To avoid this, there are some things that you can do to help your home sell faster. You can make impactful repairs like adding new flooring or painting the interior. However, in a seller's market, homes are selling very quickly. You may not need to make these repairs to sell quickly, but they will lead to a higher price point, and so we'll have to do the math. You can also set a competitive price with the help of a top real estate agent. Number three, what should the list price of my home be? Well, the first step in deciding your home's list price is to get comparative market analysis, a CMA. A qualified and experienced realtor can use market data and local knowledge to price your home right. A great agent will be an expert in the local neighborhoods, so they'll be able to price your home in the sweet spot. If you're just curious and don't want to spark up a conversation, realtors like myself can also put you into our own home valuation software that will keep you up to date on your home's value. Just be sure to let us know if you made any improvements. Number four, why is my home's assessed value different from the market value? Your home's assessed value and market value are each determined by different factors. Buyers and sellers affect the market value of the home, while professional appraisers calculate the assessed value. In a seller's market, your home's market value may be higher than its assessed value. Whereas assessed value is used to calculate your property taxes, market value is what a buyer is willing to pay for the home. Number five, are real estate commissions negotiable? Yes, you can definitely negotiate your realtor's fees. They are typically 6% with 3% of that going to the buyer's agent and 3% going to the listing agent. Now, some agents may be willing to work for less, but if your property is a tough sell, you could find yourself paying more through added bonuses. You can also try to negotiate fees on your own, though the realtor may reduce the number of services that they provide. The same thing goes for using a discount broker. Some offer cheaper rates because they're providing you with a lot less help along the way. They may even charge you a fee for service structure. 
This can work in your favor if you have experience in selling, but need just a little help with the paperwork. Now number six, when is the best time to sell a home? Early spring and summer, especially June, is a great time to sell a home. Research shows that home sales in May, June, July, and August account for about 40% of annual sales volumes. Overall, home sales are still pretty good through early fall, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to sell a home during that period either. However, home sales drop once winter hits, especially in colder climates, but not so much in Miami. Of course, this data is pre-COVID, so 2021 hasn't followed any of the norms. Take all of this with a grain of salt. Number seven. Should I buy a home before selling my old one? Whether or not you should buy a home before selling your existing home is a personal choice. Having a new home lined up gives you peace of mind when selling and you can move out on your own time. It also prevents you from lining up temporary housing and having to move twice, which can be a real pain. That said, you may get stuck paying two mortgages at once. This can be a problem if your sale takes longer than expected. You can also feel rushed into quickly finding a house instead of waiting for a better deal. Number eight, how does my agent get paid when selling a house? Total agent fees are typically five to six percent, with three percent going to the listing agent and three percent going to the buyer's agent. As the seller, you'll be responsible for paying your agent through your sale profits. You'll also pay the commission of the buyer's agent, but that is technically shared by the listing agent from what you have agreed to on the listing contract. You won't have to bring a bunch of big checks or bring wads of cash to the table. A closing agent will handle the distribution of funds when you close. They'll hold money from the buyer in escrow and use it to pay everyone, including your agent. Escrow is a third-party account where the closing agent keeps money until the time it is to be distributed. Number nine, how much does a seller pay in closing costs? Sellers usually pay 8 to 10% of the total sale price in closing costs. Of that, 5 to 6% is real commission. The rest is collection of various other costs, including title search, title insurance, escrow fees, transfer taxes, which can vary by state, pro-rated taxes, which can vary based on your local rates and when you sell. And if you decide to pay part of your buyer's closing costs, you may end up with a bit more. That can range anywhere from 2 to 5% of the sale price. Number 10, how much of the sale price do I get? Well, how much you actually get when selling your home depends on a lot of factors, but in general, expect somewhere between 90 to 92% of the sale price. That usually includes the 5 to 6% in realty commissions and 2 to 4% in taxes and fees. And if you still owe money on your old mortgage, you will get less. You'll also get less if you agree to pay for any of the buyer's closing costs. That can range from 2 to 5%, but it's all pre-negotiated as part of the process, right? You don't always have to pay your buyer's closing costs. Now, on closing day, your closing agent will distribute the funds to all the necessary parties. They'll pay out your profits via check or wire transfer. These days, everything is a wire transfer. Ask your agent for a net sheet. They can provide you with an estimate of what this will be before you get to the closing table. Number 11, how can I save money when selling a home? Well, the best way to save money when selling your home is to negotiate your realtor's fees. You can also save money by trying to sell the home on your own and completely eliminate the seller's commission. But this isn't recommended unless you have extensive experience and knowledge in the real estate industry. Selling a home involves a lot of complicated legal paperwork. An agent knows how to handle all of this so you don't land in legal trouble. One alternative is hiring an attorney to take care of the paperwork. However, they don't come cheap. Budget about $1,500, and you still need to manage your listing and coordinate showings and negotiations. Selling a home requires some marketing know-how. Agents regularly handle the hassles of advertising and showing property to potential buyers, and they alone have access to the multiple listing service, which is a local database of homes for sale. This allows them to list your home on all the major listing sites. If you're selling your home on your own, you can use a flat fee MLS company to get your home into that database and even to post your listing to all the top real estate websites. But you're going to do all of the work. Number 12, should I pay my buyer's closing costs? You may want to pay part of your buyer's closing costs if it allows them to make a better offer for the sale of your house and close sooner. Now, usually paying these costs come in the form of a credit that the buyer can use during closing. A buyer may want to put this credit towards loan origination fees, a mortgage application fee, the appraisal, points on the mortgage, and any other costs associated with buying or financing a home. Additionally, if your house has been on the market for a while, 
Offering to pay for a buyer's closing costs can attract more offers and speed up the closing process. Finally, if the inspection reveals small issues the buyer may want to repair, offering the buyer's closing costs contribution in lieu of those repairs can make the deal go through faster. Now, number 13, do I need a home inspection? It's the buyer's responsibility to get a home inspection. But as the seller, it would be in your best interest to know if anything is going to come up before you get it on the market. And so doing a pre-listing inspection has benefits. You'll have the chance to discover and take care of any major problems before listing. That can increase the value of your home. You'll also get to choose your own inspector instead of relying on the buyer's choice. You may be able to set a higher list price if your home is in great shape. You can encourage the buyer to waive their inspection contingency, meaning there will be fewer chances of the deal to fall through. At the end of the day, the buyer doesn't have to waive his contingency, but if you've taken care of a lot of the issues, why not? Number 14, what are the common bank required repairs? Well, if a buyer is taking out a conventional loan, you'll probably only need to fix major structural issues that put the value of the house at risk, such as foundational cracks or problems with the roof. Now, for an FHA loan, Federal Housing Administration, you'll need to make a lot more repairs potentially. The required repairs might include things like patching up, peeling paint, concealing any exposed wiring, fixing broken gutters, installing missing handrails on stairs. The list can be extensive because an FHA loan is provided to lower income home buyers who may not have the extra money to cover the repairs on their own. States and banks can also set their own requirements, so always check your local regulations. Number 15, how can a real estate agent help me sell a home? A real estate agent has an in-depth knowledge of the area and how your home compares to others on the market. They'll have a good idea of how much you can get for your home and ways you can improve its value. When it's time to list, they'll make sure your home's priced right, helping maximize your offers and sell your home faster. They'll also take care of all the paperwork market your home, coordinate open houses, and showings. Real estate agents aren't just helpful during the listing process. They offer a network of professionals throughout the entire selling journey. You'll have connections to everyone you need, whether that's a closing agent or a quality listing photographer. With the Ready, Set, Sell program that we offer at Franklin Realty Consultants, our agents can properly analyze your home and determine any small adjustments might be necessary to really maximize your sale price. We can even help you pay for this. I've personally done this for my sellers over the years, and we've been able to reap great returns. Work with an agent that can properly guide you to reap the highest returns on your sale. I'd love to interview for the job of being your agent. Feel free to reach me direct with a call, text, or email. My contact info is below. I look forward to hearing from you. If you like this content, please like and subscribe below and join our mailing list. Take care for now.